Welcome friends. Today we are looking at three indirect strategies that we can use to increase our renown for our dynasty. And one of them's tiny bit insidious. He puts insidious ideas in our minds. And if you're new here, I'm Krovakin, and I'm a strategy gamer who loves to create new min-max strategies. So please hit that subscribe button. But in today's video, what we're going to go through is we're going to go through three strategies that I use to optimize uh, our renown that are is not directly related to my ruler. All right, let's jump in here. Okay, the first one is quite a simple strategy, and it's easy, but often overlooked, and that is to optimize your number of living members in your dynasty ASAP. You can get this up to 100 living members in your dynasty and cap it at 100 members. Now, you have to be careful with this, Whoever is your main line, so your primary heir and their kids, you want to make sure that that main line is very straight, right? Not doesn't have that many branches. Every branch beyond your main line, you want to make sure has as many children as they can. Yeah, we just had lots and lots of sex. Now you can optimize this by marrying fecund and beauty traits into your secondary lines. All right, that's an easy strategy that most people know about but it's easy to overlook. Now, the second strategy is related to your special buildings. Now, the special buildings, right? They, a lot of them give you plus renown. Your, there are your holy sites that are going to give you plus renown, and there are also your stuff like the pyramids that's going to give you plus renown. So pretty easy, right? You want to conquer them, you want to maintain them. However, these counties aren't always optimal for you to hold. It's just not going to work for me. But who says you have to hold them? We take a look at this county right here, and we have a grand temple built here, and it's giving this ruler plus, uh, it's giving them plus 5% renown. So if we take a look at them, they are part of the Puffin dynasty. Now because of that, we are giving getting the plus 5% renown from their from their building. So if if when you're conquering, make sure that when you're divvying out the land, if you have a if you have a county that has a special building in it, it's not really optimal for your current strategy or it would cause you problems with secession, just give it to another dynasty member and then you can even build that special building for them this for you Meredith like I did in this case I actually built this right I had more money than than this uh, ruler so I gave them and they can still be a vassal of yours and you can still own that territory you just give it to your dynasty member so that you get that five percent and then you also need to make sure that your dynasty member is has enough land and enough power to defend themselves or have a high crown authority all right, now for the third strategy. And of course, if you like this video, please feel free to maximize that like button and spread this video to as many people as we can get it to. Okay, so this is the strategy that is very insidious, very insidious. And that is to actually steal someone's realm. So if we take a look at our daughter here, she is burned at the stake or burned on a stake, sorry, uh, is unmarried. So what we will do is we'll come in here and we're going to set the filters to be pressed claims. Unfortunately, we don't have a way to filter on Im implicit claims. So we have to go with pressed. Pressed and implicit are under the same category as far as these filters are concerned. Okay, so we're on the pressed claims here. We'll, we'll get a list of claims. Anybody with a white shield that is a claim that we want to look at. Anyone with a gold shield with a plus in it, that is not who we want to look at. So you can automatically filter up anybody like this uh, gentleman here as not a correct suitor. Now, of course, you want to be a matrilineal marriage if it is your if it is your daughter, and we want a patrilineal marriage if it is your son. Now, I'm not going to click on this first one uh, because I do not want to... Uh, have you two bury me? Uh, <laughs> because their parents are not dressed appropriately. They are, are naked. Now, <laughs> we're going to go in here and we're going to look at them. 
So immediately we can see that they currently have two counties. And their, their son here is the target that we're looking at. So if we click on their son, we see that he has no children. This is critical. So what we would want to do is we want to marry our daughter to him. And then they will have children. But when they have children, their children will not be of the dynasty of the Pandai. They will be of the dynasty Puffin. That means that we will get an additional count in our uh, in our dynasty, right? That's going to be another plus 0.25. Now, this is going to take two generations to go through. The, those generations could have a couple accidents. They had an accident. But that is up to you to decide how you want to play that. And then all of a sudden your dynasty takes over that realm. Now, one of the things with them taking over that realm is just because they have two counties now does not mean that they will have the two counties in the future. So you're playing a bit of a gamble here. And in my experience so far, at least in this playthrough, my experience so far is this has been a positive gamble. So usually what happens is that the realm improves. And if you want to, you could even force it so that their realm improves. There is also a risk that your dynasty members will be killed off by the family because they don't want to lose their realm. However, it is definitely a good risk to go through. But it is quite insidious, and if you can pull it off, it will get you a lot of extra get you a lot of extra renown per month. The king count and three counts by marriage are all because of the this strategy that I have here. And we even had one before another one before who was a a uh, another king before however I accidentally vassalized him <laughs> i didn't realize what i was clicking on and i accidentally vassalized him now one bonus thing that we can do with this strategy is technically we can do this ourselves what we could do is we could marry someone in a marriage so that if we're in this case, we would marry someone that's a patrilineal that's going to inherit the titles. As soon as they inherit the titles and we already have kids, we want to immediately divorce that wife and then marry someone that is infertile. And now that you've served your purpose, you're no longer needed. And the reason why is because as soon as they inherit the titles, they will no longer show up as your spells, which means that you won't get the bonus, the extra stewardship that you get from, or the extra the extra stats that you want to get from your wife. So it is important at that point that you divorce her to make sure you have children before you do that. And then when your children take over for you and when your children take over for her, they will inherit all the titles and take their realm as well. So you can actually steal it for yourself inside of your realm if you want. However, I prefer to go the renowned realm. Now, with these three strategies, you can increase your renown to absolutely ridiculous levels uh, to the point where you'll probably be making fun of my uh, 6.7 per month uh, renown up there. But with these strategies, you'll be definitely able to plan your your legacies out and achieve the legacies that you want for your dynasty as you move through your ruler and make the end game even more easy for yourself. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like and subscribe button. It helps me out immensely. And feel free to join us in the comments and discuss your strategies for getting extra renown. And with that, I will say, have yourself a good morning, good night, or good day wherever you are.